Well, happy Monday. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to do a little bit of a meditation devotional for each day of this week, reflecting on some of the events of Holy Week between Palm Sunday and Jesus' crucifixion. This will be a few minutes, and I hope that it's edifying and encouraging as we all go through this difficult week. In the stories of the week before Jesus' death and resurrection, there's an episode in which Jesus goes up to a fig tree, and he finds that it has no fruit. Matthew appears to place this story on Monday morning, as Jesus was about to make the trip down from the Mount of Olives and back up the hill into the city of Jerusalem to the temple. Now, I love figs. I've told you that before. Now, I remember the first time I had a fresh fig right off of the tree. My dad introduced me to fresh figs when I was a teenager. He had grown up eating them at his grandmother's house in Florence, South Carolina. And when we moved to North Carolina from Virginia, it was warm enough for us to have a fig tree. If you've never had a fresh fig and your impression of figs is based on the dried stuff that you can get at the grocery store or a fig Newton and that thick, sticky stuff in the middle, then you would be in for a surprise with a fresh fig. A real fresh fig right off the tree is a completely different experience than those things. But I soon discovered that figs can be tantalizing. If you have a fig tree, then you know this. The unripe figs will sit on the tree for weeks, months even, te uh, teasing you all summer long, waiting to ripen. And then you'll have a big rainfall and all the figs will burst into ripeness. Until that happens, however, you're just taunted by these unripe figs on the tree. Of course, Jesus didn't even get that chance. Matthew tells us, in the morning as he was returning to the city, he became hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the wayside, he went to it and found nothing on it but only leaves. And he said to it, may no fruit ever come from you again. And the fig tree withered at once. In Mark's account, Mark points out that it was not the season for figs. And they were near the village of Bethpage, which literally means house of unripe figs. So this shouldn't be a surprise. Jesus would have known this, obviously. But Jesus also knew what was going to happen to him at the end of the week. He also knew that he'd be raised, but still, with the knowledge that death was coming to him, it wasn't the right time for figs. When we are faced with death, or even just uncertainty, we start thinking about all the things that we would like to do. I'm not even referring to our bucket lists of big things that we want to do. I'm referring to the normal things, the little things, the things that have always been meaningful and given real value to our lives, like eating fresh figs right off of the tree. You know, my dad is a primary care doctor. He's already seen a few COVID-positive patients. And my main fear through this time, the darkest one maybe, hopefully it's the darkest one, is that it's possible that my children have seen my parents for the last time. And with that fear comes grief. And the grief is in the smaller things, those truly valuable things like seeing my dad introduce my kids to fresh figs. But right now, it's not the season for figs. Right now, we're probably all afraid of losing someone in a season that we did not expect. Or by the grace of God, if we don't lose someone, we're all dealing with something that we might have lost. What were we going to do with our savings that disappeared? What were we going to do with this time, this season, with our senior year of high school or college that has been taken away? What did we not get to do or see or experience because a season has been lost? Things don't always go 
the way we want them to go. It would be great to have one last experience, one last thing that we treasure and value before we have to say goodbye to something or, God forbid, goodbye to someone. Whatever we have lost or are losing or are afraid of losing something in our life is going to be open-ended. We can't always get closure. Not even Jesus got to have one last fig before he faced death. And even though Jesus knew that resurrection was coming, he was still sad about that. Even though we know that Easter is coming, that in Christ we have life beyond death, that he will reunite us with the people we love, there are still things that we will grieve. We can even grieve the possibility of losing things. But we know that resurrection has come. Our fear and our grief are very real, but because Jesus lives, that fear and that grief will be merely footnotes, footnotes to the blessings that we have experienced for a time now, but that we will experience forever with him. Maybe that's why Jesus cursed the fig tree. He didn't want to wait for the fruit, and we don't have to wait for the fruit either. We have the fruit of hope, a fruit that is never out of season, but a fruit that still ripens as we draw closer and closer to him. A fruit that met its ripeness, its fullness in his resurrection that we know we have now, that we can grow closer and closer to while still enjoying the knowledge that he has come to save us and give us life. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, fill us with hope in the midst of a difficult season, one of fear and grief. Let us take courage and have joy that you have provided. Even if we may not see that provision now, we're grateful that you've already shown it to us in the good news of Jesus in his death, which offers us redemption, and his resurrection, which offers us life. Let us cling to that hope, take joy in it, even in the midst of grief. We pray these things in his name. Amen.